I'm pretty sure it's fine to talk about Mario can't remember since it was like oh it's almost it's been like nine it's been a while. Oh, no, it's, it's almost a year. Yeah. yeah, it's not gonna spoil anyone. <laughs> but whenever yeah. I act whenever I was playing through that and like the world around me like progressed through time, it was actually kind of crazy. Well, I'm glad you noticed that's what was happening. A lot of people didn't yeah. pick up on it. I feel yeah, like, like I, yeah, I didn't pick up on it for a little bit. I didn't pick up, up up on it for like a few little bits until I noticed like later. Like, wait a second, this area used to not be purple, and now it's purple. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just sort of like one of the downfalls of of text in Super Mario 64 and where like the text in it would be good right like yeah. sometimes when you have hints that are a different color you know it all sort of stands out mm. so I think when people start playing Mario Kart remember like they're just like oh yeah you know there's a character that just like says a thing they're not really thinking about the fact that like in this game every text box is really really weighty like yeah. you're, you're meant to read into everything and like yeah. that's Kind of also puzzles the together. Why the difficulty gets so high is because I want you to dwell on on things yeah. that you're being introduced to before you reach the end of the game. Yeah. I want people to spend like, time with with the yeah. ideas that are introduced before they they hit the next section. You know? Yeah, it's kind of strange how like just just so you know, there's gonna be like a lot of spoilers from Mario can't remember here for anyone that cares. Yeah, can actually leave if you're gonna get spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but what's it called? I really enjoy. Uh, like, this is like a big phrase for me. I really enjoyed when I originally played Mario Can't Remember. I really enjoyed how to hack. Like throughout the whole hack, you kind of like like being led into like the ending without even knowing it in a way. And I know that's like basic storytelling, but it's, it's something I've never seen in like any other hack ever oh thank you <laughs> like what's it called how like this room has something to do with it how like basically everything around you throughout the whole hack has like a lot of the hack has like something to do with how with the whole like ending yep i may as well go ahead and spoil it uh yeah I, I, uh... I would say not everything, but almost absolutely everything in the game is based on death. And uh, the end screen is the revelation that uh, Mario is dead or has been dying for the entire game. Yeah. And Luigi killed Mario. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, a lot of people so are like, when they finished it, they're not sure if that's what I was aiming for. If you 100% it, you get a text box that confirms, yeah, Luigi killed Mario. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, uh, yeah. Find it. Like, it, it it's also like kind of strange to see the like the you know the place where Mario like like Thailand's Birdland, Birdman. It's it's also like sur it's a weird surreal feeling seeing that place before it's like corrupted. Yeah. Um... Although. Yeah. There's a really dark story behind that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe jump into that one after explaining other aspects of the game if we're gonna yeah. find the personal stories. And... Yeah, what's it called? Although, honestly, I think that it could have been conveyed a little bit better that that area exists because it's actually kind of difficult to find out on your first playthrough. Wow. I think it could have been conveyed a lot better, honestly. A lot yeah. of people were like, I like it, but what does it mean? But like, yeah. at the same time, I'm saying that one little area, the what's it called, the area at the that you can access the starting game if you have the key. But you, by the time that you get the key, you aren't in the first overworld, so you have to go back in time. Mm. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it might e be easier to convey because, like, I whenever I've I, seen I, people I, play that, I'm just saying this from like a playability reason. I feel like that should be conveyed a bit better that you can go back in time and do that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's my entire point. But I also found that like one day. that one area like pretty actually like surreal to play through. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's just like a your know, classic remix B three. You know? Yeah, what was it? Uh, Let's see, there's the yeah. city area with the like night with like the nightclub in it. Yeah. 
Uh, I was gonna say something about. Is there anything in that that's related to like the? Action? I can't remember. Related to what? <laughs> I can't remember if there was like anything there related to the actual ending of the hack in the city. Um, sort of. I mean, mostly it's like on Star Six. <laughs> you get, oh like, yeah. Um, but the only thing that's really in there is like the conversation with the DJ, uh, which like unless. Oh, you've yeah, Unless you've done all the conversations that are available in yeah. Plus One, I don't think you really pick up much in the depth of what's happening there. There's, a, there's actually a lot of text boxes that most people wouldn't know there. Like, um, while people probably notice that like stuff is act specific for like, you know, things moving and, and stars being different, there's actually like a lot of text boxes on, across the different acts as well. Yeah, um, I, I probably haven't read all of the text boxes because of that, because pe people see the thing that's in the same place and they don't think that the text boxes change. There's also those yeah, secret so signs. Um, the DJ is, is Toad until the last yeah. start, and then the, the DJ is someone else. Um, yeah, and a lot of people didn't talk to, talk to both of them. Which, oh, wow. Yeah. That made me a little sad, because, you know, it's like a juxtaposition thing. And the DJ in Star 6 in Course 1 is the DJ in, in Course 2. So it's sort of like oh, DJ. yeah. Um, mainly that's just. Uh, I, I'm a professional musician, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah. It's mainly just me. Uh, uh, sort of projecting some people I know into the game. And, uh, he makes ports. Having a bit of a <laughs> having a bit of a joke. Um, yeah, I get it. DJs, because I'm not a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, course three, that was like the gold level. I, I think I actually went to course four three first, but course three. Uh, I find it, I find course three like a weird, like it, it's the first level where you like start to think like, is this place like completely real? Because you have this like, it, first of all, if you go to that hole in the first thing, it gives a shout out to look, it gives, gives a shout out to Locomass. <laughs> yeah. And how I don't read signs, I think it's said. Oh yeah. Ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, each beta test that have like a sign in each level. Yeah. I mean, if you jump down to that cave, yeah. or there's a coin arrow pointing you to it, I think you haven't quite picked up on how I'm leading you through the cave. Help, <laughs> <Yeah>. save me. <laughs> I'm trapped. But, what's it called? In the later act, whenever there's actually something else in the cave, uh, what's it called? <laughs> I I'm like, glad that. people go down there because like it must yeah. be even even more surprising when you're suddenly yeah. in that fight. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Yeah. It's like it kind of no weird. one on the planet expected that, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's it called? Like that's the part where you start to realize like is this place real? Because like you go into the mountain and then you realize, wait a second, there's a wrestling ring in the middle of the mountain. <laughs> this is like. <laughs> Loka Mass is here because. Oh, yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> Shocking. I don't even know what to say. Hey, it's just like, it's literally like the funniest yeah. transition <laughs> in my life. Yeah, it is a funny like transition. Setting up, setting up for the, the showdown in the middle of town and the cowboy narrative. I remember you were yeah. making the mask too, you're, like you were trying you're to create that guy. little wrestling uh, outfit in the process no, as well. Dude, that was great. Dude, you finally created this shirt. <laughs> this is just this guy making fun of you for not knowing why you're. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Especially like the quicksand um, on the wrestling ring floor. I mean, like. Oh, yeah, the nobody, nobody, nobody expects was... that. Yeah, and thank goodness it kicks you out to like right outside of there. It doesn't kick you no, out. No, no, I wouldn't make you climb that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, hack creators do that more often. That's another thing that people should do more often. Oh yeah, I'll well, keep that in mind. Your, um, your failure warp in uh, in boss fights and other areas. Yeah, back to the entrance to it, please. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, what's it called directions to hack creators today. Hmm. Well, yeah. unfortunately, they need a lot of guidance. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, especially people that are uh, normal. In fact, well, he's come back. The technical side of things, but like... Yeah. 
like the gameplay stuff, it's, it's generally common sense. Even even when I'm breaking those rules, I know what they are. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. Oh, what was it? Yeah, don't do what I do. Do what I say. All right. <laughs> See, I've t I've been tempted to like make. I don't know, I'll talk about this later. It doesn't matter. What's it called? Course four. Course four is kind of like. Oh no. Course four is kind of like the most strange. Not strange, but like it's definitely like another like surrealist course, in my opinion. You get what I'm saying? It does Cole? feel strange. Yeah. Like, what I wanted to have was like a progression, you know, like you climb a big yeah. mountain so it's snowy on top and it's not on the bottom and like there's a changeover section in the middle. Yeah. The music's just saying. like so dreamy from Donkey Kong Country as well. And yeah. It's just like, it's a, like a, a, without even having like the actual, like the names of the stars and like the, the dialogue with the bombs and stuff. Like I feel like that one just. It just looks really nice, and it's just a shame that I screwed up the scaling, because all the jumps are just like... All the jumps that are what, what? Too big. Yeah, I mean, you you made the hack in like, how many hours again? 56? Oh, something like that, I don't know. Um, what that level I made in, like, that, that outside bottom area, like, I made that in like one sitting, without testing it. Huh. Yeah. Like, same for a lot, of the, a lot of the rest near the end, like, beat three, it, it, like... Didn't really yeah, get much testing. It's kind of required if the hack, though. Like, yeah, you know, and like mm -hmm. going back after you finished and fixing that is it's probably more time consuming than people realize. So it's always I, I know exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. But in terms of like actual like atmosphere, I really like Course Four, in my opinion. It's like my Thank favorite you. course in the game. Well, you know what's best? What is it based on? Mount Everest. <laughs> Not in general. Yeah, I mean, I guess, okay, I just think I can see that. Yeah, I think it is just based off a of mountain. Uh, well, yeah, I mean specifically any of like yeah. the um, the eight thousanders because uh, there's stuff about the death zone, right? The death zone's a real thing. So, yeah. You know, once you get to a certain height, there's not enough oxygen to sustain life anymore. No. And uh, the motherfuckers climb without oxygen, even even though they know that. And like, you, you know, could have hundred people a year just <laughs> drop dead. Yeah, uh, that is crazy. Oh no! You could have put toxic gas at. You could have put toxic gas at the top, but thank goodness you didn't. <laughs> the frustrating yeah. thing is like if you look at it from the perspective of the locals, man. Like in the yeah, it's like it's not just dead bodies they've got to fucking try and oh, clean wow. up. Oh wow! Of course they don't. It's like all of their garbage too. They like, just they just dump everything where they are. You know. It's, it's crazy how much like mountain climbing has been like tourism now. You, you know Mount Everest is their god. Yeah. That's their creator deity. And that's yeah. where all of the drinking water comes from, like in Nepal. <laughs> like, oh, it's wow. disgusting. Like, yeah. mountaineering is like probably one of the most white privileged things I've ever fucking heard of in my life. And that's oh, why I'm, I'm fascinated yeah. by it because I, you know, know a lot of people that have suffered a lot and they never deserved it. And these motherfuckers go out of their way to fucking suffer. It's fucking wow. amazing. They deserve to die. I, <laughs> I've got no other thing to say about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's it called? I Be think... safe when you climb, basically. Yeah. Prepare yourself. Don't I... people just place flags and whatnot in some places as a marker. Okay, sort of. Um, basically, yeah. it's impossible to retrieve someone from, like, any wow. real height. Um, oh yeah, because it's so high up. Well, like, you freeze, right? Yeah. So a person goes from being, like, less than 100 kilos to being, like, 300 kilos. Oh, wow, yeah. And, like, you're stiff as wow. a board as well. So it's incredibly dangerous for anyone to try and take you down. Because, like, being up there, the people who are trying to get your body, they're dying already. And normally they wouldn't be carrying yeah. shit, you know? So it's, it's, like, impossible. Often what they do is they'll just roll you off the path into a different section of the mountain. If you want to climb a mountain, just play Celeste. But or like, Ice Climber. It's really famous for Mount Everest that the climbers during a climbing season will just be like sitting next to the dead body of someone who died the wow. day before. Or, and like, they're just like... I mean, because they're in the death zone, they're just thinking about their own survival. So like, their attitude towards death becomes really callous and like they don't help each other when they're struggling and stuff. Which is like the most fucked up part. And it sounds super like... 
it sounds depressing now. No, no. Oh, it was man. Just... Yeah, like, if you ever really, like... The mountains were supposed to be cool, cool. Up, uh, get into mountaineering disasters, because, like, wow. Yeah. I, was <laughs> yeah, I was expecting to get into the depressing talk with talking about this hack, because it's a major theme of the hack. I just wasn't expecting mountaineering to be, like, a, like something like that. <laughs> Well, like, just like yeah. with the wrestling, it's like a, it's just like a personal interest, you know. It's like yeah. um, you're gonna have strong theming, you're gonna have some variety, and it's a, uh, you know, it's not the real world. It's a surreal yeah. world that exists in the mind of someone who's dying. So it's like yeah. larger than life. Yeah, I, you gotta think it out actually as I think of it. Like, why would like, like if 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 Mario's like creating these like worlds in his head, like you have to think about. I know this is probably what you want me to think about whether after playing the hack. It's like, what exactly was like this is life about that caused him to think about that? That space hack? What are you right. talking about, Gaddix? Oh, my one. Oh, the super event, the higher price. Is a spaceman going to make yeah. a hack? <laughs> uh, there's a very famous Russian science fiction story called Solaris uh, by uh, Vladimir Lem. Uh, very famous Russian writer, and uh, there's a very famous movie of it, which is very, very good, and that's what it's based on. Um, uh, there's also another movie with George Clooney that's not as good, but you might have seen that one. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, it's a sequel to Super Event Horizon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be done, like, in a week or so. It is very close to being finished. It needs to be tested, though. I was saying something. I was saying something. Do you want to talk about, like, behind MCU? your inspirations for Mario Can't Remember now? That, like, we think yeah. talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't talk about Course 1 yet. Uh, Course 1. Um, oh, yeah. Were you going that's just straight school? out of my real life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say anything particularly incriminating. Yeah. Um... I can understand. How, how much reality are we uh, prepared to uh, to express in this podcast? I don't know. Uh... We talk about Mario ROM hacks, so I don't know how far that goes. When <laughs> <laughs> it comes to reality. Like, um, I guess like uh, tailgate parties, or uh, I don't know, like under a bridge, or a rave, or a full moon kinda, party. I kind of get what you're talking about. Yeah, only only a certain number of the audience is probably really engaged in these types of activities. But like, I have, a, a, I know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure. You're I just a boy. That adults do when they socialize. It's particularly adults who like drugs. Uh, <laughs> it's to go somewhere where there isn't going to be, and uh, and and do their their music, you know. Um, so in Australia, uh, there's a very um, you know, sort of famous cultural sort of thing that we do uh which is the bush doof we go doofing um so yeah just go out into the, the deep bush set up a really loud sound system and yeah. play music while people take psychedelic drugs uh, traditionally it would be like psytrance but these days it's kind of like anything electronic dance music just locally produced stuff you know wow. it's a very big sense of community because people are playing their own music for their friends and, um but, uh, you know, also seen some of the most fucked up things in my life in that atmosphere. So, wow. uh, interesting subject matter, I felt. Um, I, have some, I have something to talk about, but I'm going to do it after the ha podcast. Just out of, like, it, it, it's, it, it's even heavier than what you're talking about, so. Sure. Hmm. Well, yeah, um, I, yeah. well uh, disclaimer, I, I, don't, I don't do drugs anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, the DJ Toad, uh, the thing that he is rambling on about, uh, talking about like uh, all these allegories with mountains and then later you get to paranoid peaks. Uh, yeah. Anyone who has like been at a party in the bush and taken like DMT with their friends at sunrise will probably immediately recognize what's happening in that scene. Uh, otherwise, I assume most people just think like. LSD for most of the stuff that's happening in my game, and fair enough. That's yeah. a quick answer. Uh, not gonna, not gonna promote any nasty things, but specifically, that's that's a DMT reference. Um, yeah. Be safe, kids. Don't do anything dumb. Yeah. Uh, other than that, um, 
I have lost a lot of uh, friends to suicide and overdoses. Yeah. Oh. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Heavy subject. There's a fucking siren going up. Uh, do you have any questions? Emergency. Uh, yeah, does, anybody, yeah, does anybody in chat have any questions? We were going to do this like question segment at the end of these things, but we forgot about it. Yeah, it's kind of like week. a oh, quick queen, like, eh? with, um, like what I'm talking about. Oh. Well, the pretty much gone. Uh, so, Mips the Bunny. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of, isn't there like a duality thing going on there? Um, so, like, on the one hand, that's meant to be just like. Mips the bunny, you know, like he has a past association with Mario. Um, yeah. On the other hand, that's my dead friend John, um, who essentially was like I, I don't I don't talk to my family. I was abused as a child and neglected and stuff. Um, okay. And I met him <laughs> when I was a teenager, and uh, he was essentially my brother. Um, hmm. And uh, when I was about twenty-five, he hanged himself. Um, so, a lot of people feel that conversation is really weighty, but I don't think they really get what it is. It's like, it's very yeah. sad. Um, I honestly don't remember anything about the MIPS, but... Neither does Mario. Basically, how do I put this? When you've lost someone that is, yeah. like, that close to you, Oh, they're, yeah. they're they're in your head forever. Like they they will always live with you. Of course. Um, and um, yeah, to... when talking about preferring to forget. Oh. Um, yeah. It's not that he wants to forget what happened in the sense like he doesn't want to forget that he had a friend and stuff. He wants to forget what happened to his friend. Yeah. Uh, oh which, yeah. In the case of suicide. Um, I mean, it's often preceded by people pushing away all of their friends and being like finding it impossible to deal with their emotions and stuff. So, yeah. often your last memories of these people are them being extremely angry with you. Um, yeah. And like, he was the closest person in the world to me, um, and yeah, I... I knew that he was struggling, but no one else did. And uh, I was very much focused on raising my family at that point in time. My um, my ex-wife was, was dealing with some really bad suicidal ideation herself. <laughs> and um, she rang me on the phone one night after we'd had a massive falling out, like, I don't know, like nine months before or something. Um, and like, he got really upset because like, we're talking about something dumb and I was just like, that's kind of racist. And then he just like, spent like the next like three weeks writing emails about like how he's not a racist and I was like because I don't think you're a racist and anyway and he rang me and he was just like basically he just wanted to like say he was sorry and goodbye and then hung up and it was really confusing and I didn't know what was going on and I found yeah. out maybe later that he hanged himself straight after that phone call. Wow. He at least wanted to make amends in some way before that happened. He didn't want to leave it off with the argument. I get it. He didn't want you to think of him that way. Basically. It, 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 it's hard for me to talk about these things right now. Especially when I can't say, I don't want to say much. Fair. Um, I want to uh, I actually lost someone to the exact same thing uh, at the start of the year during SRM. And uh, it's been incredibly hard for me, so. Uh, oh, not exactly in like 2022? Able to talk about this stuff too easily at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk yeah, that's about okay. something. I'll talk about what I'm talking about in like, after the, I, 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 I'm gonna talk about a lot of this stuff after Hackcast, I just can't right now. All I know is I'll never hurt Mips again, especially in that it, game. <laughs> I, it always annoys me that people are rude to him. He's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> you always jump and put him oh, into underwater and all that. I've accidentally punched him a few times, I think. <laughs> Deep down, Mips is a friend. <laughs> Same thing happens to Toad, though, so. Except the baby penguin. That's fine. You can kill that. Uh, 
there is uh, so B three. I'm gonna come back to that now. Um, this is gonna be hard to talk about. I might disappear for a minute. Sorry. Uh, you might disappear for what? A minute or two. Just to clear my head after this. But um, that's fine. I almost died several times, but uh, one time in particular. Um, I don't know how much detail I should use. Uh, I have PTSD, so like this is incredibly maybe, traumatic for me to talk about. So I'll try not yeah, to. Maybe, okay, maybe we should like. I don't know. I don't know if we should talk about a, a lot of this stuff on stream. I feel like that, like that conversation we had just earlier. I feel like that for like the stream stuff after stream, where I want to talk about more darks. I, I, just like get it off my head. Yeah, I want you. I was, I want you. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to word this, but like that conversation we had earlier about your friend. I feel like that's yeah. like the lowest it should go, if that makes any sense. Like it's fine to talk just, about that deep. He just wants to do it outside because he just wanted like yeah. a general overview. It's like, oh, with you know the idea of this character, what the dialogue and all that comes from. How about the levels? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm very sorry if it, like, it, there's a difference between like stuff I want to talk about on the stream and not. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially considering this is a podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a very. Maybe I should like add a warning for YouTube. At Instant warps, like, man. Just, like, <laughs> yeah. Saying that like about halfway through the podcast, this gets very deep. Warning: guest is quills. Chronic <laughs> depression, PTSD person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, all I was gonna say is that it's basically based on a near-death experience. I don't mean I don't have to explain yeah. why. Mm -hmm. to. It's, it's fucking chilling. But uh, yeah. the whole hack, you mean? No. Well, the, I mean the experiences level. too. C three. Um, oh, C three. Uh, like uh, one last thing, the remix level. Oh, oh the mashup one. Like, like a white version of it, and there's like a colorful yeah. version of it. Yeah, I like that uh, one. Long story short, I got knocked out, and um, oh. like my train of thought just turned into like really pretty music, just like really scary. Um, <laughs> wow. But that's the general vibe I was going for, and we yeah. can leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I like that level. Maybe just. <laughs> Should we, we're getting to like the point where we usually end the podcast anyway. Is there anything really? else? Any, well, yeah, we usually go for like about. To cover. <laughs> Is there anything about okay. instant warps we haven't brought up yet? Very yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just, gonna, you know, we're just glad warps. you beat all the odds that you're still here and you beat all those odds. Yeah. I, so that's yeah, very I, strong. I mean, I being a. Uh, being a professional artist means that, like, you dedicate your life to your passions, regardless of oh yeah how much that hurts oh, you. Oh yeah. And um, this is why people need to support artists. Like, I mean, it's really hard for like any like commercial value to be associated with what we do. But like, mm -hmm. I mean, most people they have something horrible happen yeah. to them, they they move on, they learn to deal with it. Like, that can inspire you know, projects it's, too sometimes it's like it's like in your brain forever you overanalyze it we have yeah. hard life and like mm. most of my friends that have dedicated themselves to the arts i'm 33 they're dead yeah yeah that's, wow. and that's the reality so yeah. like yeah support indie artists please because they oh, are yeah. better than any other artists i know it'd be inspiring too because <laughs> they even make song even when an artist get they broke off a relationship or something. They can make a song out of that. Many artists have done that. Yeah, the I mean, simple I life and short films is. I yeah, I have a lot I want to talk about after the stream. Okay, <laughs> sounds <wills>. good. <laughs> and uh, I mean that goes for anyone. If anyone is dealing with uh, subjects that are this extreme, uh, they are incredibly yeah. difficult to talk about with people. You can contact me to talk about them. That's fine. Um, that's always been a, a thing I've tried to, to maintain as like a. You know, it's more yeah. it's more bold than you think it is when you speak out about it it's one of the bravest things you can do for sure yeah, yeah well i mean a lot of people are like you know you gotta stay stay positive when things are hard you gotta but it's it's not move always on. possible and that's yeah. uh, absolutely not yeah, you know, helpful we've been away. for people with chronic depression that's what depression makes you want you think it makes you think that nothing you do matters it fills that 
that's your thought process for everything, which is yeah, the worst I mean, part like, about people it. Need, they need to uh, process and, and have people listen to them and know that people care, and you know, that's what might mean all that. Yeah. 